Hey everyone, my name is Royce and I'm a second year MD PhD student at Penn. In this video, I'm going to talk about how things in surgery are starting to click with me. Once I get off from the hospital, I've also been spending time studying for shelf exams. And these are basically standardized tests that are specific for each specialty. So right now I'm studying for the surgical shelf exam. I'll definitely talk more about it in the future. I've been studying from books like Surgical Recall and from Pistana's Surgery Notes. I just love the feeling of appearing more smart to other people. I mean, look at me now holding these books that I've never opened before. Shout out to my friend who's letting me borrow these for this video, by the way. And I've also been using UWorld a lot, which some of you guys may have very fond memories of from studying for the MCAT. So the UWorld questions are actually really hard and it doesn't help that I forgot a lot of stuff from my preclinical courses. So when I first started out, I would get like 30, 40% right. There was a day when I got 50% right um, that was one out of two questions correct, um, and that was a pretty good day. But I think over time, the information has been starting to click. But I'm like, oh, I know exactly what this question's talking about, and it feels really good. For example, there might be a patient who has left lower quadrant pain, fever, high white blood cell count. It's found that they have gas in their urine, and I know immediately what happened. They have diverticulitis, which is a special kind of inflammation in this area of the colon, and that led to an abscess of infection that eventually led to a fistula between the colon and the bladder, and that's where the gas came from. Moments like that, I'm like, wow, this feels amazing. I feel like Dr. House or something. Of course, those moments are really rare, but definitely things have been starting to click and I've been answering questions at a much higher percentage. So from like 30% to like 45. But yeah, you know, overall, I'm not too worried. I'm trusting the process, as they say in Philadelphia. Right now, I'm motivated by the fact that in the future, I will be a fully functional physician, maybe a surgeon. For example, if there's someone bleeding out on the street and I need to be a good Samaritan, you know, I feel confident in myself going up to them and helping them out and getting the right diagnosis and treatment for them 40% of the time. I mean, that's just an amazing feeling. So throughout medical school, they would pay emphasis to basically everything when it comes to a patient. But when it comes to surgery, for example, colorectal surgery, they kind of just don't care about anything else other than the digestive system. So when I was presenting one of the patients and I said, John Doe, a 50 year old male, had a history of renal cell carcinoma and had one of his kidneys removed. They just stopped me right there and was like, I literally don't care. I was like, okay, wait, the kidneys, abdominal surgery, but apparently that stuff's just not really important to include in your one-liner for the patient. And when they told me that, I was like, oh, thank goodness, because I know nothing about renal cell carcinoma. That's definitely taken some getting used to, but I think in the long run, it's been a lot easier because I can just ignore like half of the history of a patient. So whereas before, I would have to know every single aspect of their history, which I feel like most doctors should know. I guess surgeons just don't really care. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll see y'all next week.